afternoon. Welcome to Option Center. It is the weekend edition. Thanks everybody for joining. Go down to that bottom right hand corner if you're new here. Hit that Options Center logo and subscribe. And if you want to get these videos, updates for the weekend, throughout the days, um, please do uh, hit that notification button so you can receive the bell. And um, also, if you want to go to the Patreon and you want trade education, you want one-on-ones, you want um, um, all sorts of, um, I, I guess, extras and uh, morning prep videos, things like that. We can do Zooms. We can do whatever you want. Um, if you want that, please, uh, $5 for the first tier monthly, $10 for the second with trade alerts. So, okay, let's jump into it. This ESPX on the weekly. We'll do the daily and 65, and then we'll move on to VIX and SPY for the, mostly for the volume. And then uh, that'll end it for um, the free video. We'll move on to the Patreon uh, version. After that, um, last week we were not doing Beyond Today, no official trades. Uh, Roku is still on as an official trade, but we uh, we definitely took some profits off of that one. So here we go, SPX on the weekly. You see this nice bullish hammer? You know that uh, at first it, it tells you, hey, look out for higher prices is this move over we don't think so because of our indicators but uh, we're getting rejected off of the 8 ema for the weekly we did regain the 20 so um just a real inflection point here you see obviously all these wicks here so there's a lot of um a lot of demand at that point at around the uh, 4300 area but uh you know it can only it can only last so long you know before we either uh, push off of it, have some follow through and or break through it. So we're going to look at that early next week to see what happens. Now, Monday is Columbus Day. The uh, market will be open, but the bond market is closed. So I I'm not sure how that will affect things because we've been looking at bonds so closely to see how it affects tech um, specifically and financials specifically. That's been, it's been polarized. So uh, I explain that in the options, guys. Go down to the link. It's a free Discord where um, we talked about it uh, pretty pretty thoroughly. Uh, you know, when rates, when bonds are going up, rates go down. That means that um, uh, tech enjoys life. So, um, and obviously the inverse. So with higher rates, tech does not like that, but the, but the banks do. So we've been polarized with the, uh, financials and tech and, and, you know, things could flip at any time if the, uh, bonds decide to, um, just, just lift and, uh, We'll go through that in the uh, Patreon video, but okay. So we call this gap wars one, two, one, two, one, two. I'm calling it that because of all the gaps. There's a lot of movement overnight, you guys. So we're gapping up, filling the gap, filling other gaps, gapping again every single day, it seems like. And um, right now the one, two, one, two, one, two right there, that's our setup. That's our bear setup um, for a big move to the downside. You see our 382 uh, area with the 40 41 um pullback we don't necessarily have to get there in one swoop but we are looking for some sort of big move to the downside and then possibly a uh, sideways move which will end um at the uh 382 or um a, a a big move down to get to the 382 and then sideways after that. Either way, we're just looking for a complex, it's already been complex, uh, correction um, before we start moving back to uh, the upside for wave five. So um, there you go on the weekly bullish hammer, still holding this uh, rising pivot. We have um, some confluence down below with the uh, 50 week moving average and um, the rising pivot 382 as well. So let's go down, wait, 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 wait. I always do that, don't wanna skip that. Look at the uh, bearish momentum on there. We are well in bull territory. I'm not saying that we are um, in a bear trend on the weekly, we're clearly in a bull trend, but we are losing momentum pretty quick. Histograms are growing each and every week. The RSI has not quite reached that 50. So that's actually a tea leaf for the bears. We do wanna reach and test that 50, uh, line and possibly just go underneath it somewhat 
And uh, before we start our rise to the top, um, let's see if we can uh, break down and test that 50 before moving up. Okay, so moving on to the daily. Daily trend is our friend. After this ending diagonal, we broke down for an A, possibly B, or one, two, one, two. I have the A, B, and I expect a five wave move down to the C if we're going to do, if we're, if this is going to be a, uh, a clear, decisive move to the downside, then um, I do expect a uh, one, two, three to the one, six, one, eight, four, five. Now that doesn't have to happen that way. That's what I'm looking for. We could clearly stop at the uh, 1618 to have an ABC and uh, right at the 200 day moving average. And then that would, um, we would bring our A up here. So we'd have an A, some sort of B, and then uh, for a flat, and then a C, which would bring us down to the, um, to the, our target at the 382 fib. So it all depends on what happens here with the um, with this first move, which is the A, the larger A. All right, so A, B, and then a five-way move down. That would give us a great A, B, C, um, or an A, B, C, or in, in some cases, you can call it a W, X, Y, if we just have a, um, a zigzag, three-move up, three-way move down for... Um, a complex correction and that could be it for the move so really this next week is going to be so crucial uh, maybe next two weeks to see how that ends up but uh, we do expect some down movement coming up real soon okay enough of that here's what's happening on the uh the macd we're testing we had that big move up. We we popped out of that range that we were in all week. It took took a four five. It took a three of the um, five trading days, and then we had an inside day. Uh, we're back above the twenty day moving average, but rejected off of the fifty. So we're squeezed right in there. But we're, you see, the MACD is actually the uh, yellow leader line is testing that um, the blue MACD line. And uh, the, the histogram is getting real tight there at the zero line. And so we're, we're basically at resistance. Do we break through or do we break down? That's an inflection point, you guys. So same thing with the RSI. You see on the daily, we, we had a slight divergence. That divergence doesn't say anything to me. I do think we're going to um, create a more of a divergence or clearly just break through that. It's not that deep. Uh, we, we barely touched uh, the 33 area. I, I want to see this thing overbought before we actually uh, move to the upside. But we're testing that 50 um, line for the RSI, which is, is clearly the uh, um, inflection point um, where, uh, you know, on the bullish side, we continue to move on the upside, use that as uh, support. And now we're using it as resistance. Okay. All right, let's go down to 65, see if we can get anything out of the lower time frame. 65 minute chart. Uh, we had a pivot there. Let me change it to this color here just so I can keep my rising and um, falling pivots the same. So that's a falling pivot right there that we have. Um, we came to, to test this uh, gap from above. You see the gap gap there's gaps all over the place uh on these moves that that uh, we did close some of them out so we're in we're stuck in between two gaps we have the huge area at the three the 4381 area if we don't get through that right away then uh we're probably going to see um higher highs on this and and we can still get to higher levels before moving down don't get me wrong but i don't think this is much of a flag. I do believe this is an impulse. This looks like we have a five wave move there. So a possible one, two, and then start moving our wave three down. So um, I do think we had our, uh, some people are calling this a one, two, three, four, and then five above. I think we already had our corrective move of an A, B, and then our C, which is a one, two, three. So a one, two, three, one, two, three, and now we're working our way down. Um, that will negate our plan if we get above this uh, falling pivot. 
All right. Um, anything else? We have our expected moves here on the 4312 area. Uh, so that would be a nice first target on a very, very short term. Uh, if we start closing underneath this bad boy, then uh, you are starting to see that volatility really, really pick up. Uh, we do have an expected move on the upside. Uh, these are, these are non-biased. These are just our playing field for the week. Um, if we are going to be bullish, we'll probably touch this sooner than later on the upside. Okay, so um, that does it. We have our um, we had our divergence, our bullish divergence on the MACD. Um, we think that played out already. That is done and over. We're trying to cross back over to the downside on the uh, on the 65 minute time frame. Same thing with the RSI. We came up to um, what we were in a bearish market on this time frame. Um, this would be, a, you know, it could easily be a 60 to 70 uh, range would be considered overbought in a bullish market. And then, um, you know, on the 65 minute we're talking about, not in a bullish market overall, then uh, the 70 to 80 range is the overbought range where we're, we would be considering some uh, down move from there. So you see um, on the on the bearish move, the bearish market on the 65 minute, we are um, well into oversold territory. And that goes same thing as the opposite side. So from the 20 down to about 10, that's your oversold area now now that we're uh we're going to oscillate on the lower end of the moves so usually it's about the 30 the 30 to um 40 range when you have a uh very bullish market see the 30 you could bounce off of there got a little bit lower than the 30 there but uh we keep up above about the 30 point and now we're looking for um a different uh a little bit different um I guess, uh, uh, character, character of the market. So now we're down in this area. Okay, so that does it um, for the SPX. Let's move over to SPY. Let's go to the daily so we can see just a little bit better what the uh, volume is on the daily chart. And we're not getting much volume the last two days on those up moves. Um, we had the, uh, looks like a bearish engulfing on this time frame um on this on spy so we did engulf the body of the entire candle before so i would consider the bearish golfing plus we already had a um a, a morning star uh i'm shooting star reversal candle i was looking for a gap down for an abandoned baby we didn't get it so but still still potential uh bearish candle with a little bit of follow through now let's see what we get next week and um you can see also the uh, resistance in the rsi and also the macd okay um you see all the gaps happening that's our gap 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 and so uh, you know what um with that 65 minute chart on the uh spx i didn't explain uh, i'll just go to this real quick um what our what our wave count is so um pulling down the chart again sorry uh, I, I did this pretty quick so we have that our a in the red b and now we're looking for a five wave move down if this is going to be an abc to our um target there so we have wave one wave two looks like it's complete and now we'd be working on wave three which would be considered our 1618 would be our, our target on that one and that'd take us down to the 4128 area on the spx and uh that could be it for the move um or or and this is where we we play much more light uh that could be it for the move and we start our actual sideways pattern or um we have a wave four and uh, wave five to actually get down to our main target. And that would um, show exactly what's really happening in this market at that point. So sorry, so lengthy in that. Uh, let's go over to the VIX on the daily. This is a VIX futures. We saw right at the end that we got a little bit of a spike there that created a, a bullish hammer, possible reversal. So uh, we'll be looking for this to uh, make a move. Uh, we're making higher highs and higher lows. And, and right here, we actually um, made a lower high and then a higher low. So, you know, somewhat of a cons consolidation. I do expect a, um, a larger move from this point on. So that just give you a view of that. So um, we will end this off with the SPX options expected move. Let's go here. here, here. 
for the week. And up close there, you see um, we didn't we didn't quite reach the top of the expected move or the bottom uh, when we started off the week. Didn't quite touch. So um, again, inefficiency. We went way outside the week before, outside the week before, inside the week. We're just really inefficient right here in the market. So I do expect some sort of large move. We have an option expected move of about 80 points to the plus side or to the negative side, and um, I do expect to breach to breach that range um, on either side at this point. So keep an eye out for that. I do think it's going to be. Um, I'm, I'm biased to the downside, but uh, we'll see what happens. So. Um, patrons, stick around.